صلی اللہ سیدنا محمد و علی و صحبی و سلم تسلیمہ صلاة تفتح لنا عباب الردہ و تیسیر و تغلق بها عباب الشری و تاثیر آنت مولانا فنع مولا و نع نسیر السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ دی امام حداد رحم اللہ تعالی in continuing with the poem of Qad Kafani Ilmu Rabbi he now after speaking of the humility of the slaves humility how they should be in a constant state of humility he spoke about the insignificance of wealth and the significance of poverty that we should be of those people that when we are in a state of poverty we should do shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when we are in a state of richness, of wealth, then what should we do? We should turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank Him by increasing in charity. So, Imam Haddad rahimullahu ta'ala, in the past few years, he said that the aajizhi is a very important thing. And the aajizhi is a very important thing. But the aajizhi is a very important thing. اس میں کمی ہے کہ لوگوں کو فرما رہے ہیں کہ دولت کی طرف مت باغو دین کی طرف باغو leave the wealth where it is do not run after it but run after the deen because when you run after the deen you will find yourself in a state of impoverishment why? because now you are not wasting your time running after the dunya this is the example that we take from the likes of the Ashab al-Safa, the likes of Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu an, who relates the most hadith from all of the Sahaba. 5,000 in excess hadith, Sayyidina Abu Huraira, he relates. But he was a Muslim for amongst the least amount of time from the Sahaba. So, kam dor unho ne Islam me guzara Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu an. لیکن احدیث میں وہ سب سے ٹاپ میں آتے ہیں راویوں میں پانچ ہزار سے اوپر حدیث انہوں نے ان سے روایت آتی ہے why because he was from the اصحاب الصفہ from the homeless صحابہ he lived in the masjid in the mean of it when the صحابہ asked him how is it that you have been a muslim for the least amount of time but you have related so many حدیث he said, whilst you people were busy with your families, with your children, with your wealth, I was busy gathering hadith from the Prophet When the Prophet would not come into the masjid for the entire day, it is saying that Abu Huraira, he used to be in a state of yearning. Where is my beloved? Where is the Prophet In a state of anguish, walking around in the masjid, when will he come? And when the Messenger of Allah enters the masjid, Alhamdulillah, peace at last. Why? Because now he stayed away from the dunya. This is why he excelled in the deen. You can't have both. If you want both, you will be mediocre in both. You'll be mediocre in your wealth. You'll be mediocre in your deen as well. But if you want to excel in both, then you will have to choose one or the other. If you want to excel in dunya, you will do so at the cost of the deen. If you want to excel in the deen, you will only do so at the cost of riches. You can't have both. We've seen where people try to have both. Even ulama who try to have both. The ship always sinks. And unfortunately, it's normally at the compromise of the deen and the ethics and the morals as well. Now he shows us, after he explains to us the importance of humility aajizi hame dekha ke ab imam hame ye dikhayenge ki ye ilm pa ke allah tbarak wa taala se dua kaise mangte hain after you've done this how do you now present yourself before allah subhanahu wa taala after acquiring this knowledge that he has just given you so he says in verse 5 and 6 couplets 5 and 6 ya ilahi wa maliki anta ta'lam kayfa hali ya allah وَبِمَا قَدْ حَلَّا قَلْبِ مِنْ هُمُومٍ وَشْتِغَالِ يَا اللَّهُ What is he saying here? He says here, O my Lord, my King, you know my state. And what has settled in my heart from worries and preoccupations. کہ اے میرے رب, اے میرے مالک, میرے بادشاہ, تو 
तू ही जानता है मेरे मेरा हाल किया है यू नो वॉट इज माई स्टेट यू आर माई किंग ही इज ओपनली से इन ही इज टीचिंग यू दिन यू कॉम बिफोर अल्लाह इज नॉट जस्ट अल्लाह रिमूव ऑल माई वरीज ओ अल्लाह मेक माई प्रॉब्लम इन स्कूल गो वे या अल्लाह मेक माई प्रॉब्लम इन माई बिजनेस गो वे या अल्लाह प्लीज गेट रिड ऑफ दिस रेंज ओवर फॉर मी या अल्लाह प्लीज गिव मी अलम्बर या अल्लाह प्लीज मेक दिस housing rewire very easy for me it's not that's not what you asking you have to come in with a whole plan there has to be you know when you have a business you don't just go and open the business you have to come with a business plan your dua has to have a business plan it has to have a build up there's a step by step once you've got the plan in place only then do you go to the crux of what you need and this is what he's teaching you here you have to break yourself down be completely in a state of humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only then can you ask him and even then he's telling you you don't even need to ask him because he already knows what is in your heart and what you are going to ask him what you need from him so why are you asking of him for particular matters ask him in a state of need this is what he's teaching you now he's saying and what has settled in my heart from worries and preoccupations You know what is in my heart. You know my problems. You know what I am preoccupied with. Resolve all of these matters for me. Make them easy for me. But first and foremost, you must accept that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is your lord. He is your king. And you are nothing but a slave before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the purpose of us bowing in our prayer. Now when you look at the Ahlul Kitab when you look at the Christians for example they used to bow down to the ground they used to prostrate their head onto the ground when we when we answered Christianity we went we we mentioned the verses when it speaks about Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and Sayyidina Isa and how they used to prostrate to the ground but then what happened the ones who came later they removed this action to pehle daur mein Isai wo sajda karte the उनकी इबादत ऐसे थी लेकिन ये बाद में जो आए उन्होंने सजदा निकाल दिया उनकी इबादत से क्यों बिकॉज वेन यू बाउ टू अल्लाह सुबहाना वाल एंड यू प्रोस्ट्रेट टू अल्लाह सुबहाना वाल दैट इज वेन यू आर द क्लोजेस्ट टू द मर्सी ऑफ अल्लाह सुबहाना हुआ तला सबसे करीब इबादत वो ही मौका है जब हम सजदा में होते हैं So this is why they removed it to remove that connection to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove that humility this is why people increase in arrogance when you pray your fard salah you see people pray their fard salah so they pray the two fard of fajr they pray the four fard of dhuhr four fard of asr three fard of maghrib four fard of isha and they leave everything else they do what is required from them and that is it nothing more nothing less and by doing that they fulfill the obligation but when you speak to them there is arrogance when you speak to them there is a disease in their heart sunnat sunnat nahi ada karte nawafil nahi padhte witr bhi nahi ada karte kehte hain hum sirf fard padhenge lekin jab inse guftugu karte hain to kya hota hai हम देखते हैं कि उनके दिलों में तकबर होता है और कमी भी होती है एंड वाई इज दिस बिकॉज दे आर रिड्यूस इन दी अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम वे दे आर इन दी क्लोज प्रोक्सिमिटी टू अल्लाह सुबहान मर्सी दोज यू प्रे दे सुन मोर ऑफ्टन दे नॉट मोर ऑफ्टन दे नॉट एंड दैट डिस्कलेमर इन बिकॉज सुन टाइम यू हैव एन बोथ साइड So what happens you have those people who do not spend that time that extra time that voluntary time that overtime in the proximity to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then because of them not going into this state they increase in the waswasa of satan satan attacks them more they find themselves getting more angry at little little things they find themselves getting agitated by little little things every single problem that comes towards them they find themselves get worried about it why because you're leaving that precise specific beautiful moment that you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy when you implement that those who 
pray this sunnahs, the extras, they pray the nawafir, and then they exceed even in that. They pray the duha, they pray the awabin. They go into the extra motive of, I want to do extra sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see a change in them. The arrogance is not there because why? They are fallen in prostration to the king. They are saying to the king, I am a slave. May ik abid hu, bas. May gulam hu, meri koi ahmiyat nahi. Tu hi mera rab hai, tu hi mera malik hai. May sab apni mushkilate do bhi parishani hai, may sab tere hawale karta hu. So you see a complete change in them. They are not the same as those people who only do the bare minimum. This is why you see, if I give you a worldly example, people who go to work, what happens when they go to work? Those who stay there and they do the contracted hours, they do the contracted hours, they arrive, I start at 9 o'clock, 8.59, they sat there playing on the phone, okay, 8.59, point fifty nine. okay, I'm going to log in now. 9 o'clock on the dot. I finish at 5.30, boss comes, can you do this extra little bit of work for me? It's important. No, 5.30, it's gone, I'm out of here. But then he comes to the other person. And that person says, I'm going to be here at 8.30, I'm going to log in, and if I get an extra call or whatever, I'm going to take it. 5.30, my boss comes to me and says, look, it's a very important matter, can you please help me with this? So he says, yes, of course I will. Even if that takes him till 8 o'clock at night, he says, I'm going to do it. Because why? My boss has asked me. And then what happens to this individual? When it comes to promotions, when it comes to giving recognition, who does it go to? It goes to the one who put in that extra effort. The one who is just there coming on time and leaving, he's not the one that's up for promotion, is he? No, because it's like, look, when, he, when it comes to him, he's not going to do anything that's extra. When it's required of him to stay behind and sort a problem out, he's not going to be there. So now, not to draw a comparison, but just by way of example, when you are prostrating to Allah, when you are trying to break down your nafs, <coughs> it's the same thing. If you are only doing that which is directed for you, and you are not exerting yourself, then you reduce the amount of effect that is going to take place for you. So he says, Allah is the king. In the hadith Qudsi, Recorded in <coughs> the Mishkatul Masabih from Abu Naim. And <coughs> Sayyidina Abu Dardar relates that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, there's a hadith Qudsi, it's the wording of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but it is Allah who is saying it. That's the difference between a normal hadith and hadith Qudsi. A normal hadith is the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it's the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam relating it from himself. But Hadith Qudsi is the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but the meaning is coming directly from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So he says, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, I am Allah other than whom there is no God. May he tumhara rabhu, jiske alawa koi hor maabood nahi. Master of kings, king of the kings. Badshahu ka malik hume. Badshahu ka badshah. In whose hands are the hearts of kings. So we turn to the kings and we say, Subhanallah, help me. O MPs, help me. O Prime Minister, help me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Ke mere haat mein har badshah ka dil hai. Their hearts are in my hand. They do not control anything. I am the controller of everything. He subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, if my servants obey me, agar mere abid, meri pervi karte hai, meri shariyat par amal karte hai, I turn the hearts of the kings to them with mercy and compassion. Phir me unke badshahu ke dil, unki taraf rahmat aur hamdardi me tabdeel kar deta hu. But you must submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when they disobey me, جب میرے عابد میری پیروی نہیں کرتے میرا حکم نہیں مارتے شریعت کے خلاف جاتے ہیں تو پھر کیا ہوتا ہے اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی says I turn the hearts of their kings against them with anger and vengeance پھر میں ان کے بادشاہوں کے دل ان کے خلاف کر دیتا ہوں 
और फिर वो उनको सजा देते हैं उनके ऊपर गसा गुस्सा करते हैं उनकी तरफ इंतकाम में तब्दील कर देता हूं आई फ्यू दे हॉर्स विद वेंजेंस एंड एंगर टू वॉज दे पीपो एंड देन दे इनफ्लिक्स वे पुनिशमेंट ऑन दैम सो अल्लाह वट इज डू आफ्टर से इन दिस ही सेज डू नॉट ऑक्यूपाई योर सर्व विद प्रेइंग खर्स ऑन द किंग्स अपना वक्त इसमें मत गुजारो कि आप अपने बादशाहों पर लानत बेचते हो यह आपके लिए कोई चीज नहीं इसमें कोई फायदा नहीं आपका दस नो बेनिफिट इन दिस इन स्टेड वो शुड यू डू इसके बजाय अपना वक्त मेरे जिक्र में और दुआ में गुजारो इन स्टेड स्पेंड योर टाइम इन माई रिमेंबरेंस इन माई जिक्र एंड इन दुआ वाई so that i may suffice you against your kings i may suffice you against your kings taaki tumhare badshahon ke muqable mein main tumhare liye kafi hu that is what you are supposed to be doing in these states instead of looking at these kings and looking at these united nations and these prime ministers and presidents because the hukum still applies to them they may not call them some of kings but they act as kings they believe that the dominion is this you know the superpower of the world trump biden and all of these kamala kuala whatever it is all of these things what do they do they think they are the kings of the world but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says collection of abu huraira uh, collection of imam muslim related by abu huraira that the most wretched person in the court of allah on the day of resurrection and the worst person befitting of his wrath will be the person who is called malikul amlak ke jo bhi shakhs duniya mein wo apne aap ko kehta hai ki main badshahon ka badshah hu wo sabse gunagar aadmi hoga roz e qiyamat par oh the one who calls himself shahin shah jo kehta hai ki main shahin shah hu or in the uh, persian is shahan shah for there is no king but allah allah tbarak wa taala ke siwaye hor koi badshah hai hi nahi there is no one else who has dominion over the world these borders that you see in place they are all man made everything is in the milkiyat it is in the dominion of allah subhanahu wa taala everything belongs to him because he is the true king allah subhanahu wa taala warns us to the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam collection of abu dawood related by abu huraira the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says whoever clings to the ruler or king will be put to trial ke jo bhi badshahon ke sath rehta hai badshahon ke sath rehta hai hukumran ke sath rehta hai uske upar azmaishe aayengi he will be tested he will be put to trial No servant draws closer to a king except that he becomes more distant from Allah. So when you see ulama and this is the worst thing you have to start with the ulama. When you see ulama who are right hand people of presidents and prime ministers and their advisers this is a big problem. When they are right hand people of rulers of kings this is a big problem. Oh Sheikh I'm going to be in your committee oh president I'm going to be in your committee your advisory board I'm doing something good because we need a representation of Muslims on that board what representation have you done apart from getting yourself a name that I represent you don't represent nothing the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you through the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam stay away from the king stay away from the rulers because the closer you get to them the further you will become from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so those people who sign off on these abraham accords you will see this is why they are becoming distant from the deen this is why they are compromising the status of their brothers and sisters in islam this is why they have no compassion or mercy towards their brothers and sisters in islam because by signing these kind of treaties what do they do 
they become distant from Allah. Allah removing the compassion and mercy away from them. This is the only way that they can bring themselves to sign such treaties. In the collection of Imam Bukhari, Abu Huraira radiallahu an relates, on the day of resurrection, Allah will hold the entire earth and fold the heaven with his right hand. Now the right hand is not a hand like us. We say that Allah has a hand because Allah told us he has a hand. Allah told us he has a face. But we do not say what or how that is. That is not what we do. We leave that to the people who want to do that. They want to do it, let them do it. That's their deviance. For us, Allah has said it, it is true, but we do not go in the kayfiyat, we do not go into the how. Okay, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ne kaha hai Quran mein, ke mera haat hai, mera wajh hai, mera, meri, meri, meri wajh hai. Uh, he says, my shin. When he says these things, hum kehte hai ki ye sahih hai. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ne ye farmaya hai. Lekin hum ye nahi kehte, ke ye kaise Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ne farmaya hai. Hum ye nahi kehte, ke Allah ka haat humare jaisa hai. Jab Allah tabarak wa ta'ala farmata hai, meri aank. Hum ye nahi kehte, ke Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ki aank humari jaisi hai. We do not say the eye is like our eye. His listening is like our listening. His speaking is like our speaking. We do not say this. Why? Because Allah says, Surah 42 verse 11, nothing is like him. So if nothing is like him, then you cannot draw comparisons with creation. But when he says with his right hand, and he will say, I am the king. Where are the kings of the earth? On that day, Allah Tabarakah wa Ta'ala puri dunya ko, jahan ko samet lega apne haath mein. Phir Allah Tabarakah wa Ta'ala puche ga, dunya ke badshah kaha hai? Aaj fakr ke saath chalte hai, fakr ke saath bayan karte hai, fakr ke saath zulm karte hai. Us din kaha honge? This is the point of this. Where will they be on that day? Where will their oppression be? Where will their wealth and their children and all of their arrogance, where will it be on that day? Allah will destroy all of it. Except eight things. Eight things will not be destroyed. And make a note of this. The Arsh of Allah will not be destroyed. The Kursi of Allah will not be destroyed. Heaven and hell will not be destroyed. The coccyx of humans from where the essence of humans is derived from. That will not be destroyed. The souls will not be destroyed. The tablet will not be destroyed. And the pen will not be destroyed. These eight matters will suffice. Everything else will be destroyed. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Mulk, Surah 67 verse 1, what does he say? He says, blessed is the one is whose hands rest all authority. And he is the most capable of every matter. Everything is in his kingship. He is the master, he is the king of absolutely everything. So when people come out and they say borders and Islam and this kind of thing, they're lying. They're liars. There is no borders in Islam. In Islam there's a Khilafah. And in the Khilafah there's no borders. The borders, there are, these are man-made things. These are man-made things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create Saudi Arabia. You know, the house of Saud came into power and they named it Saudi Arabia. It is not the indigenous people, the Muslims that were in America already with the dark skin and the turbans on, that were already in America, that, that named it the United States of America. Yes, that's true. That's true. Research on it. Who were the indigenous originals? It was not, it was Christopher Columbus who came and quote unquote discovered it. No, you didn't. There were people there already whom you killed, just like the Zionists are killing the Palestinians. The indigenous people welcomed these people onto their land and that is what they did. The Palestinians invited these people onto their land and this is what they did. This is why you see the states promoting them and backing them because they, they're just a little brother, aren't they? So like, come on, good boy, carry on. Carry on in our footsteps. He says, you know my state. Because why? Nothing escapes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah 2 verse 231. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Be mindful of Allah and know that Allah has perfect knowledge of all things. So don't think that Allah is not aware of what you are going through. Whatever you are going through, Allah is aware of it. And He will deal with it if you are patient. If you are patient, if you rely on Allah, He will ensure your problems are resolved. In Surah Yunus, Surah 10 of the Quran, verse 61, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, There is no activity that you engage in, or portion of the Quran that you recite, nor any deed you may be doing, except that we are a witness over you whilst you are doing it. Everything that you do is being recorded. In the collection of Imam Bukhari, there are two sets of angels. They come and stay with you, the angels of Fajr and the angels of Asr. They work in shifts. They come down and they record everything that you do from Fajr all the way to Asr. They record it and then they return to their Lord. Then at Asr time, more angels come and stay with you all the way from Asr to Fajr, recording everything that you've done. Then they return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, how did you leave my servant? They say, we left him in a state of worship. This is why it's important for you to be praying your salah at the start time. So when Fajr time enters, you're already praying salah. You're already reciting Quran. When Asr time enters, you're already reciting Quran. You're already praying salah. Not even an atom's weight is hidden from your Lord on earth or in heaven. Nor anything smaller or larger than that. But it is recorded in a perfect record. So don't think anything that you do is not in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put your trust in Him and your matters will be resolved. Allah knows our each and every state. Our each breath is recorded. How then can you think Allah has abandoned you? He knows what is in our hearts and what troubles our hearts. Hence the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us the dua, Ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O changer of the hearts, strengthen my heart upon your religion. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, this is a hadith in Tirmidhi by Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik. Sayyidina Anas said, Ya Rasulullah, we believe in you and what you have come with. But do you fear for us? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yes. Indeed, the hearts are between two fingers of Allah's. He changes them as He wills. So don't be firm in your heart that I will never leave this world upon disbelief. Don't get comfort in your arrogance. <coughs> don't become complacent. Because this is the Messenger of Allah وسلم, the Beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is teaching you, do not become complacent in the matter. Make this dua. And another dua that he gives us is, Allahumma musarrif al kulubi sarif kulubna ala ta'atik. He says, Abdullah ibn, uh, ibn Amr ibn al As in the collection of Imam Muslim, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Verily the hearts of all the children of Adam are between the fingers of the fingers of the Most Merciful, as one heart. He directs them in whatever way he wills. So don't think you are firm upon this. He knows what is in your heart. He is controlling your hearts. With a blink of an eye, even less than that, it can be changed. So you repeat these du'as. When Allah knows what is in our hearts, then how can we lose our reliance upon Him? Turn to Him in a state of humility and understand if He has brought you to it, He will bring you out of it. You just must rely on Him, and this is how you present yourself before Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Wa ma'adina illa bilaghul mubin, wa sallallahu alaihi wasallam Muhammadin, wa lahi wa sahbihi sallam sallimakthira.